Good afternoon. Bienvenidos a todos. A este parque hermoso y amado por todos en nuestra comunidad. This park is so important to the community. This art is world-class art. And it is not only beautiful, but as people here know from 40 years more back, 43, these murals are connected to a people's movement that makes it all the more meaningful. It's just not some abstraction that somebody said was beautiful, but it's connected to the aspirations of people in a community who said, this is our park, we're going to use it for us, and we're going to beautify it the way we think is appropriate, using, in fact, the very structures that attempted to divide the community. Rather than allow that to happen, you all said, no, we're going to have this for our community. We're going to unite the community. And we're going to have art that, in fact, beautifies it, brings people together, talks about our history, talks about our community, and says, this is ours and we will build on it. So it's a true honor to be here, to stand on the shoulders of those who made this happen. All these young guys here are standing on the shoulders of those who, who did this 43 years ago. It is the unifying symbol of this community. It could be and should be the unifying symbol of our city. One of the things, by the way, uh, You know, there's a little uh, dispute about tourism going on. One of the things I'm saying is, why don't we have our tourism authority market places like this that are so important to our community and help the businesses in this community and help people in this community rather than a few hotels downtown. So if we're going to have public money going into our tourist authority, let us market our real community treasures, our real community beauty, the thing that can really help economic development in our communities, and talk about these murals. Now, because of the work of many people here, Josie Talamantes, Tommy Camarillo, this these unifying symbols are now, have been placed on the National Register of Historic Places, and that's what we are here today to formally recognize. We have always known that. We have always known that. Chunky has always known that. But what we have known, and, and you all have known this community as a gathering place, as a historic gathering place, is now officially recognized in the nation and in our community. This is truly an historic place. It is an honor that those of you, and we are connecting our past and our present right here today, those of you who worked so hard to make it happen, we thank you. We are inspired by you. We honor you. And we appreciate everything that you have done. There's so many people, you, many of you here know them. The artists who contributed to these murals, Salvador, Tor Salvador Torres, Sal, Victor Ochoa, where's Victor? Torero Acevedo, Acevedo, thank you so much. Members of the Royal Chicano Air Force, Armando Nunez. Armando Nunez. Norma Montoya. Norma Montoya. Yami Durarte. Yami Go Durarte. Tarasi. Durarte. Yeah. Where is she? Thank you. Gracias, gracias, gracias. And to the students who commuted, uh, who uh, contributed to their efforts, and their mothers who fed them, encouraged them, hundreds of others in this community who over the years took the People's Park and did their part to protect and preserve it without any expectation of either recognition or accolades. But this tierra is, some, is the community's tierra. And thank you all who made that happen. Tommy, 
chairperson of the Chicano Park Steering Committee, and all the volunteers who work so hard with you every day to make this, keep this, to keep this as a historic treasure. Josie Talamantes, uh, going through all the work to going through the process of getting this uh, uh, name to the National Register, this is not, wasn't an easy task, but we thank you so much for it. And uh, what we have here is, is, really, is really the realization of this, of Si Se Puede. Se Puede? Si Se. Se Puede? This is truly a reality. I would like to, uh, we got to have first our political guys all talk, and then the real heroes uh, will end the day. The councilman for District 8, who has a leader on our city council, who's make sure that uh, the people's rights and the people's aims and the people's needs are represented on the San Diego City Council, David Alvarez. Thank you. Buenos dias. Uh, I don't have any prepared remarks uh, because I've lived here my entire life. I've been coming to this park my entire life. I grew up on Newton Avenue, um, so I've seen these murals uh, for my entire life. Um, I will just want to share a little bit about what I remember about Chicano Park growing up. And, and I have to be honest that it wasn't always a good thing. Um, and it's not because of the work that uh, many of you here worked on 43 years ago. But for a period of time, especially when I was growing up, uh, something happened where people forgot, um, and again, not, not anybody here, but I think, you know, some people forgot the value of what we had. And um, things that we didn't want to happen in this community were happening, and that's the truth. I had uh, a cousin of mine, Chicano Park Day, I think it was um, uh, maybe 25th anniversary or so, maybe before that. Uh, you know, there was a lot of sometimes turf wars. Um, an unfortunate incident happened that day. A uh, brother of mine, uh, no secret to anybody, uh, growing up in Barrio Logan, you are exposed to gangs and you're exposed to, you were exposed to gangs and you were exposed to some negative things. And uh, I had family involved with that. Um, unfortunate incidents as well there. But I'm just so proud that today we can stand here and say those days are long gone. And they're long gone because of the work that many of you who are here today, um, whether it's the artists who, were in, who are inspiring people through their work, or Tommy and the steering committee who are making sure that the park is maintained in its integrity and it's still a, a part of this community, um, or other folks, I saw Rachel here and the work that she does with the youth um, the community here in Barrio Logan. It's been a really community effort and I'm a product of this community and I'm here to say thank you. Thank you for all that you've done to allow someone like me to have this opportunity to be working for the community. And now we're working together because there's still a lot of changes that are happening and a lot of ideas that are percolating about Barrio Logan. But I can assure you today as I have Tommy and others that we're going to maintain the history and the rich culture that this park means to this community. We're working, for example, with Armando, uh, one of the artists, on the gateway sign, the new sign that's going to announce to the world, this is Barrio Logan, that I know uh, Senator Hueso, uh, Senator at that time uh, Duchenne, and others worked on to make sure that that was a reality for this community. We're integrating the community, the culture, into the new things that are coming. And we're going to make sure that that continues to happen because this is a unique place. It has to maintain its integrity and it's got to maintain its beauty that we're so proud of. I'm so happy that I'm here today to join with all of you who mean so much to this community and what you're leaving behind for generations to come. It's just a really, really proud day for all of us. And I'll let you know finally on Tuesday, if any of you have the opportunity, please come to the council. We're going to be recognizing this accomplishment and we're going to be recognizing the work that Josie, the effort that Josie put into doing this. So please join me on Tuesday at the City Council meeting. Thank you very much. I do want to mention uh, Senator Denise Duchenne and all the work that she has done for our community. 
How many people were here during the People's Park movement? Thank you so much. I mean, the, the, what you've done, Rachel, thank you, and continue to do. You all work so hard as uh, in our community. Ben Wesso was a councilman for District 8. He was an assembly member. He was a council president. And now we have to refer to him as Senator Ben Wesso. Senator-elect, <laughs> but thank you very much. It really is an honor for me to be here and really having had the opportunity to serve as the, the chairman of, of the California Water Parks and Wildlife Committee and also a sitting member of the California Department of Parks and Recreation, which are the ones working with our local uh, constituents to submit the application to Washington for uh, consideration. Having this happen while, while I'm, I'm the sitting member is really special to me. My father was one of the people that were here. He was one of those links in the human chain that stopped the bulldozers from creating a highway patrol station here. He was one of the people that, that dared to stand up, just like many of you that were here that day, that dared to stand up against their government to say we deserve better. And the fact that they stood up that day gave this community something that you could not put a value on. I, I was raised here in this park. A lot of my brothers and I had the opportunity to benefit from something that our parents created for us. My brother learned to play the guitar here in this park with Chunky as his teacher. And he was able to go on and teach other people in my family and other, his own kids and other kids in the community what, what he learned from Chunky. And my brother now makes a living as an artist, thanks to Salvador Torres being a mentor to him, showing him how to apply paint on the walls. My brother learned from Salvador, and he was inspired by his creativity and his love of art. Here in this park is where it happened. I, I can't tell you how many kids that I grew up with this was our park. This is where I learned how to play ba basketball. This is where they learned how to play basketball. This is where we would play football and soccer. And this is where we learned the value of teamwork. Growing up in a community that had a deficiency of parks with a dream, simply a dream, to have a community with a quality that is afforded to every other neighborhood in San Diego. All we wanted here is for us to preserve our sense of community and to have a safe and quality neighborhood to raise our families. And that's been expressed in this park. These walls will talk about our history, about the value of our culture. I was raised looking at these paintings, saying this is part of my heritage. This is who I am and it made me proud of who I am because the artwork is so beautiful and is inspired by people that have a love for themselves and their culture. Think about the value that that provides to our children. That's something that we should be very proud of and that's something that we should hold on to and continue to work to advance. I, I, I've always been grateful to the people that come here every week and take the time from their days to contribute to the improvement and the betterment of this park because really they're speaking out for a lot of us that want to see the, these improvements happen. I'm, I'm again, you know, I, I'm grateful to all of you for being here today and for recognizing this important day because this is, this is more important than the paintings on the walls. This is more important than the grass under our feet. This is much more important than a park in the city of San Diego. This park is about a people, it's about a struggle, it's about a community coming together 
and making a difference in the lives of their family members and an entire state. Because the state of California is only as strong as its individual neighborhoods. And this is a neighborhood that needs to remain, that needs to get stronger, that needs to feel empowered. The people of this neighborhood are as influential as any other in every part of the state. And they need to feel that way because it is so. So thank you again. And I look forward to continuing to work with you to improve and advance the, the, the footing of this park in our city's list of, of resources. And we have a lot to be proud of. Thank you. Gracias, Ben. I want to also make sure that our city staff, which takes, tries to help taking care of the park, our park director, Stacy Lomenico, is she here with Stacy? And all her staff uh, working with us, thank you so much for what you do. As uh, Ben said, uh, Chunky has mentored all of us. Uh, Sal has, men has mentored all of us. Torero has men t mentored all of us. And the leader of the mentors who has guided this park for so long, Tommy Camarillo, we owe you so much. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you. Thank you all for coming to Chicano Park, the People's Park. Today, Chicano Park is in the National Register, not because of the politicians, not because of uh, somebody that had a job to do it, but because one of our founding sisters of uh, Chicano Park volunteered for over 14 years. She worked on this. She did the research. She talked to as many people as she could. She bugged me a lot, I know that. But, um, and then she had to convince us that this was a really a good thing for Chicano Park, the community, and all communities. I want everybody to know that she is the person that made this possible. And we're really proud of her. And we thank her, Josie Talamantes. Okay, hello everybody. Um, uh, I want to thank you, Mayor Fildner, for your statement of commitment uh, to the service and leadership of the total community. I can remember a time seeing a coffee table book of San Diego, and I grabbed it immediately looking for Chicano Park. We weren't there. Um, Tommy, thank you so much for all your work that you've been doing. And the 14 years, it wasn't all research. She said it right. It took a long time to convince my community that this was the right thing to do for us. That was all the research, is finding other places that were similar and there were none. The National Register um, of Historic Places, as it's, rec as it's recognized, uh, recognizes national treasures. There's a strict criteria for placement on the registry. Quote, unquote, historic fact, source fact material has to be documented uh, for placement. It has to be traceable all the way back. Chicano Park uh, nomination is inclusive of both Chicano Park and the Chicano Park monumental murals, which is not an easy task with regard to the murals. That is extremely significant. The National Register recognizes historic places, um, a lot of architectural old buildings, um, pretty much old history that isn't very inclusive of my community. So that is very uh, significant. And the murals in particular, because it sets a precedent 
for murals created during the height of the Ch Chicano civil rights era to go forward and seek recognition to be worthy of preservation. Within our community, we know they're worthy of preservation, but to have the National Register recognize them as national treasures is, is very important to us because it tells our history. The three areas that I targeted on were criteria A, which was local level due, due to the significance of the Chicano rights movement and events that contributed to the broad patterns of San Diego's political and social history. And I'm just doing this for so many of you, so in case you don't know about the National Register, this is things you should know so that you can quote back. Criteria C is because of the assemblage of murals created by master artists associated with the Chicano, Park, uh, Chicano movement. And criteria G, because we're not 50 years old, they are recognized in the context of the Chicano civil rights era and the development of San Diego. The San, thank you. The, the San Diego Historical Site Board actually designated Chicano Park a historic site in 1980, just 10 years, when we were only 10 years old. And they are quoted as saying that they represented the park and the park represented an era of development of San Diego. It is associated with, an, with important events in the main currents of local history. Chicano Park exemplifies the broad cultural, political, economic, and social history of the community. In other words, a defining moment between the relationship of my community and the city of San Diego. And this, like I said, the establishment of the murals um, is recognized for the exceptional works of public art that transform gray concrete pillars um, into our super information highway, documenting history through visual iconography of current events, validating our cultural history and legacy as well as the ability to beautify our community. And I, I documented the murals, but it's important to recognize that all of the arts were critical. The music, the dance, the poetry, the performance arts, the actors, all, all, of, all of the artists in the community came and celebrate and continue to celebrate on a volunteer basis once a year at Chicano Park to celebrate our heritage. For San Diego, Logan Heights, San Diego and the relationship between Logan Heights, racism and cultural isolation was not a new phenomenon. The residents of Logan Heights, prior to the takeover and the 12 long days of occupation to build the to occupy the land to build our park on April 22nd, 1970. And you all know what April 22nd, 1970 is, right? Yeah. Besides Chicano Park, it is the national launching of Earth Day. We built our own park on, on that day, we, even though we were here beforehand. Blacks and Chicanos had been living in this area since, 18, since the 1890s. Yeah, I said 1890s. And before that, the Kumeyaay who had their villages over there off of, in the area of 32nd Street. San Diego began to grow, um, and as San Diego grew, Logan Heights, because of restrict, restricted uh, housing covenant, restricted covenants in housing contracts by the 1920s, Logan Heights was considered the residential section for Mexicans, Negroes and Orientals. In other words, we could not live anywhere else. We could only live here. Fast forward to the 50s and the 60s, federal transportation, public policy, and local redevelopment zoning changed our enclave of homes, local businesses, uh, entertainment sites, recreation, and spiritual gathering places into industrial zones.
this has became industrial, which brought in dismantlers, junkyards, and other hazardous businesses. Through eminent domain, the second largest barrio on the West Coast shrank to about 75%, approximately 500 residents by the 1970s. That, that's that's a, a significant drop in population. We were told we, we could only live here, and now we were told to get out. Knock down the door, here, move. It, it, I can remember Jose Gomez quoting, we were just people that hadn't gotten out of the way of the junkyards, that we, we had to sacrifice for the greater good of uh, San Diego. So we had industries, freeways, I mean, even right now talking, the freeways, Coronado Bay Bridge, and then the ultimate proposal of the California Highway Patrol substation. We wanted a park. And at that point, which was critical, which was the defining, or as they say these days, the tipping point, the local residents, elders, seniors, children, students of San Diego City College, San Diego State University, UCSD, high schools, junior high schools, the Brown Berets, cannery workers, longshoremen and other dock workers, NASCO workers, and other industrial workers along the Bayfront, and other border area, and the broader areas of San Diego region, San Isidro, Otay, et cetera, and then eventually other areas of California, Arizona, Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, and beyond came to stand ground for Chicano Park. The 12-day occupation, uh, while we were building our own park, stopped the state of California and the city of San Diego saying, ya basta, listen to us. Your residents with the same rights as anyone else in this beautiful city. Listen to us. The formation of the Chicano Park Steering Committee happened that very day. And to this day, they remain stewards of the park for over 43 years. Thank you, Rachel, for bringing the balloons of 43 years. <laughs> 43 years. And they continue to fight for the park and other social justice issues that are faced every day by our community. There are more than 70 murals in this area, 49 and one sculpture are actually listed on the, um, on the National Register. I had to pick a time frame, so I picked 1970 to 1989. Although there are those of us who would say we're still in the middle of the Ch Chicano Civil Rights era. So, for, so close to 43 years, Tommy, Chunky, many others have been stewards of this park. The Brown Berets, David Rico, uh, continue to support and fight for the rights of this park. I did want to say, and I know we're not supposed to talk a whole lot, but I did want to read off the names of a lot of the artists because I don't think there's ever been one time that most of the names have been written. So I'm going to just kind of read a litany of names. Uh, there's Guillermo Aranda, Salvador Queso Torres, Mario Torero, Victor Ochoa, Esteban Villa, Ricardo Favela, Guillermo Roset, Juanishi Orozco, Jose Montoya, Charles Gato Felix, Tony De Vargas, Rupert Garcia, Yolanda Lopez, Norma Montoya, Yami Durarte, Gilbert Magoo Lujan, and the Mechitas from UC Irvine, Victor Cordero, Cordero uh, Jari Alvarez, Alvaro Mia, Milano, Miano, Jose Cervantes, Irma Barbosa, Juan Carrillo, Carlos Lopez, Sal Barajas, Daniel de los Reyes, Isaias Crow, Mario Chacon, Gloria Sanchez, Celia Rodriguez, Dolores, Dolores Serrano, Felipe Adame, Octavio Gonzalez, Michael Schnorr, Susan Yamagata, Raul, Jose Jaques, Vidal Aguirre, 
Armando Núñez, Carmen Caló, Socorro Gamboa, Raúl Espinosa, Marisela Romo Ibarra, Kathy Espitio, Espitia Puente, Bernice Badillo, Cheryl Linday, Scott Kessler, Carlota Hernández, Felipe Barbosa, Arturo Román, Román uh, Raúl Espinosa, Tomás Montoya, Maceo to Montoya, uh, Domingo Orozco, Dani Or Or Orozco, Joey Orozco, Armando Rodríguez, Rosalinda Montes Palacios, Vera Sánchez, Arturo Singh, Tomás Coyote, Castañeda, Rico Bueno, Carlota, uh, Richard Carlota Smiley, Benavides, Rosa Olga Navarro, Carlos García, David Mena, Fernando Paloma, Palomo, Rubén Ceja, Rocco Stacchi, Stacochi, Los Toltecas en Aslan, el Congreso de Artistas Chicanos en los con, Congreso Artistas Chicanos en Aslan, Caca, José Alaque, Art, Art, Grupo Santana, Manuel Parsons, Manny More, Octavio González, Lomas Youth Crew, Vidal Aguirre, Eri Galindo, Glory Galindo, Hector Viegas, Socorro Gamboa, Rosa Lucero, Lori Manzano, Antonia Pérez, Fernando Palomo, and I believe that is it. And there were probably others because many of us painted without our names being recognized. So with that, um, I'm really proud to say today is an important day and I thank all of you for being here. There's so many of you that were here, um, including Gus and uh, I mean, I, I could just, I don't, you know, Chunky, Isabel, all the names of the people that were here, Manuel, Clara, um, oh, and Todd Sands, because he jumped in after Michael passed, Todd Sands, uh, Rachel Ortiz, and uh, Mario, of course. Anyway, thank you so much, and it's an honor to have done this work. I'll say is my family's been here for over a hundred years. My first grandson was brought home to Logan Heights to my grandma's house one block away. And my son Miguel Cid still lives here and my niece Lisa Talamantes lived here growing up so my family has roots and remains here. And of course we can't forget one of my chief staff members now in the mayor's office who is here, Francisco Estrada. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Josie, for uh, making us understand that if you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you're going. And I want to assure Chunky and Rachel and all those who are here, the fight is still continuing. Absolutely. And one of the, one of the, uh, the, the updates of that fight is the uh, community plan. And we're going to make sure that that gets done in the interest of the community. And we're going to make sure that that happens. We're going to end with a uh, presentation by Mario Acevedo. Thank you very much. The Chicano Revolution is still going on. We are world famous. But the city of San Diego continued to do business as usual until the end of the world came in 2012. And Mr. Filner got elected. We definitely are part of the map now. And because of that, we have brought here one of my posters that I made on 19, 1995 dedicated to La Mujer, Laura, Laura Rodriguez, the mother of Chicano Park. It's a poster that I made for all of us, and this is a gift to Mr. Filner here. With great pride, we give it to him. Señor, it's tuyo. Gracias. Gracias.
And with great humility, I accept this to be continue to be inspired by all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Gracias.